Hello there, minions. Today, in a supplemental to Wheezy's War College, what I'm, I'm going to try something new here where I'm going to break down a streak that I had in a gameplay and walk you guys through kind of my thought process and breakdown and how it applies to the concepts I've been teaching in Wheezy's War College and will continue to expound on in future modules. So let's just get into it. Let me know what you guys think. Uh, and uh, yeah, let's just go. So let me switch over here, uh, hide away my capture there and uh, the first thing that we're going to start off by noting is this is a game of team deathmatch in modern warfare now what i'm doing here as i spawn in is i have a car 98k now i was unlocking the reptile camos for this and so um, it is completely naked there are no attachments on this which increases the difficulty of using a weapon like this so it's a streak that we're going to break down, explain kind of what's going through it. There's a couple of plays, three specifically, that I'm going to call out um, as we go on this series of uh, five kills in this streak, essentially. And hopefully you guys will get some value out of some of the decisions uh, that I go through in this gameplay. So to start out, just go ahead and fire it up. I've spawned in. Um, okay, so this is team deathmatch. So the score down here doesn't necessarily influence uh, my gameplay unless it's a really close game coming down to the end and I have to be very careful not to die. We have a decent lead here so that's not really going to come into play on how I decide to play this. Um, so what I'm really just doing because of my familiarity with this map is uh, and looking at where my teammates are. Essentially I see that the teammates are all through here um, and actually can I just Bring that down a little bit so my teammates are kind of on this side of the map which means that i know that the enemy is probably going to be spawning a in the back part of the map and because of where my teammates are um, these teammates up here are basically up in this building right here um, one of my favorite routes and one of the things that i like to do is actually to go up here so basically go up these stairs and then i will be pushing towards that right hand side of the map to uh, to see if there's enemies around that I might have the opportunity to kill. So before I run out in the open, this is a vulnerable position if you don't go through that building on my right-hand side. Um, so you have to be careful not to get caught out here. Now when you come up here, um, you know as soon as you peek over here, there's a uh, kind of a little closet sort of area right here where people not often but can kind of sit and camp. Um, or just in general, people can be kind of out of sight up here so you have to be aware and ready to fight as soon as you come up over this ridge here so I have my gun up and I see someone and immediately get that kill um, now as I'm continuing to move on I am looking still trying to be aware that people might be in here but I also know that through this line of sight that there is on the far side up here a uh, elevated position that people can climb up to and they like to snipe down from there into this area. So I'm going to primarily be checking to make sure nobody's here first. And then as I continue to move this way, I'm going to check and see if people are coming on my level and also checking to see if someone is up higher, being aware that I won't necessarily have a whole lot of time if someone is up higher. Um, so getting back to it there, I'm checking down low. I take shots. And so immediately I take cover. So when we talk about um, disengaging, um, it, can be, it can be important to realize that sometimes you get in a situation where right here I'm looking kind of low for people to, um, to shoot at basically along this area. I haven't really caught sight of this, you know, dark skinned character just yet. Wow, that sounded racist. Um, <laughs> so as I aim down here, I, when I start taking damage, you know, I immediately see that that shot came from up here. And so my instinct is one of two things. One is to try and return fire, try to get a shot up there. And if I had an automatic weapon, this might be a push that I could do a little bit better, but I'm running a naked car 98. So I've got decent range. I know if I can hit a one shot headshot or upper body shot that I could probably get a kill with this, but I've got no scope. Um, and he's got the advantage. He's already shooting at me and I'm not even aiming at him. So I have to cover this distance. Um, while I'm already taking damage. So what I end up choosing to do is take a shot at him and see if I can get lucky getting a one-hot kill. And then I'm immediately going to try and take cover back the way I came. I could try and move in behind this box, but A, it's further away than the cover I just came from. And B, 
I'm going to be trapped here uh, if uh, I sit behind this box. So I'm going to try and move out of the way here if I don't manage to get a kill. So I take a shot and I'm taking cover. Now I'm reloading. I'm considering whether or not I think he's going to push, but people who sit up there don't really push. So now I can try and decide if I want to try and re-engage, because now I know where he is. However, he's got an automatic weapon and I have no scope on my rifle, which doesn't seem like it would be a very good fight for me. I would probably lose that fight. So instead, <clears throat> now that I've reloaded, <clears throat> and I'm still relatively certain with my teammates here that, um, that no one, enemies aren't gonna be behind me, what I'm gonna try and do is see if I can get an angle on him push out off the edge over there, jump out off this edge over here, and see if I can get a shot at him from a different angle. So I reloaded, I'm jumping off the edge here. Now I haven't pushed this position a lot, so I'm not super familiar with it. I know that he's here, and I'm trying to get an angle on him. I'm hoping when I jump down here that I immediately have that angle, but I don't. So I'm gonna have to move around here in order to open up that angle at him. Um, cause he's still going to be expecting me to try and re-peek from where I was originally. Now I have to be aware as I'm moving this direction that enemies could easily be coming from anywhere along here or even down low on this side. Um, and this is actually a stairwell where people can be coming from inside this building. So there's a lot of risk in this area. Um, so I need to make this move quickly because when I move through here, I want to try and get a shot on this guy as quickly as I can so that I can continue into an area of better cover moving underneath the walkway over here and then back around towards the back staircase to this building because that's got better cover and I don't want to be out in the open here for very long. So, so I'm looking up there for him. I don't see him. I'm looking for an angle so I move over until I can get a shot at him. Now there, it's an easy kill for me because, let's, let's back it up here a little bit. When I come across here, I'm still moving out here. Now, I'm if he was looking down here, I would be a little bit vulnerable as I'm out in the open trying to get this angle on him because I'm not as familiar with it. If I were more familiar with this play, I would have run straight to this uh, barrel and this cover, these bricks here, and used that as kind of partial cover and just engaged him from there. But I was looking for which angle you know, was gonna be the right one to be able to see him. So I have to come over this far before I finally get the angle on him. And he is still looking for me up here where I was. So acting fast was important because if I had waited up there to decide what to do or tried to re-peek, if it took, takes too long, then he's gonna start searching around to figure out where I've gone. So because I acted so quickly, he's still waiting for me to re-peek that single location. And because of that, I get an easy headshot on him. And so now I'm moving on um, to the underneath here. Now here's the second play. Uh, I see this guy coming through here and so I'm gonna take a shot at him and I get a hit marker but he's not dead. So you can see I'm already turning because he's going that way and I can either try and chase him with my car 98 single bolt action as it's cycling right now um, and he almost certainly has an automatic weapon or while I'm recycling the bolt, you know, I need to kind of take cover to recycle anyway in case he immediately turns back around to re-engage me. But while I'm cycling that bolt and taking cover behind here, I'm also going to be flanking around to try and get a different angle on him. Because chasing him with this weapon is not going to put me at an advantage. Maybe with an automatic I'd have a chance. So now I see that that, that rocket came in. I got a hit marker on that guy, so this assist means that that guy that I was chasing is dead. Um, so the disengagement was the important part of this play, um, just to kind of show that chasing there would have been a bad idea, although it didn't result in me getting a kill this time. So now I'm gonna move back into here, being aware that the enemies are kind of coming from this direction. Notice how um, when I was moving through there, because this is relatively open, I'm looking for enemies to be in this area. And rather than just moving straight through there, which is where I'm headed, I'm going to move behind this pillar so that I have a little bit of cover in case someone comes running through here um, and catches me by surprise. Because if I'm just standing here out in the open and someone comes in through here, we're going to be standing face to face in a gunfight where I have a you know, semi a bolt action rifle with no optic and they most likely will have an uh, automatic weapon. So I want to use that cover 
to try and give me an advantage if someone comes in so I'm not standing right in front of the doorway uh, and then I move forward. So I managed to see a guy over here who's watching for enemies. I've basically flanked their team. You can see uh, up here, my team is still essentially where they started out at the beginning of this streak. They haven't really moved out of our spawn area. So I'm still expecting that I'm essentially in the enemy spawn right now. And since our entire team's over there, he's looking for enemies back that way and he hasn't necessarily figured out even though I have an unsuppressed weapon and he's probably been getting little blips around here as I've been shooting um, that uh, someone is moving around on his flank and he's not aware of that so because of that I've managed to flank him and I get to just line up a nice easy one hit kill um, I'm reloading here so I take some cover I'm listening for people nearby and I move back out here I find a guy uh, as I jump out who luckily is AFK so I get a free kill there no, no skill involved with killing AFK now, I've got to evaluate what to do here. So talking about the, you know, situational awareness plan, uh, you know, uh, plan, uh, execute, evaluate. God, I forgot my own pr uh, process there for a second. I'm reevaluating where I am. So I'm kind of in the enemy spawn here still, but I can see that I've got teammates coming in and pushing up. So this most likely isn't going to continue to be the enemy spawn. And with our team kind of scattered all over the place, I don't necessarily know where the enemy is going to spawn, so the best move for me kind of from here, since I've moved up here, since I got this kill up here and that kill there, um, essentially I'm going to try and move out of the open and get to cover, so I'm going to try and move over this way towards that building um, and see if I can figure out where the enemies are so that I can decide what my next move is going to be. So I'm trying to get to safety, get under cover so I can figure out where the enemy is and then decide what to do. So when I walk in here, I start hearing footsteps, you guys can hear that, and I decided just to wait for that kill. So in times like this, and you will often get, uh, especially if you're in like a free-for-all and people can talk to you, get hate for this, so you can see from my gameplay up until this point, I have been moving all the way through the map and moving through here um, until I finally got to this point and then I hear footsteps coming from out here and so I hold and wait for a guy to come through here since I know without an automatic weapon, I will be at a disadvantage. So when the enemy comes through here, I'm gonna try and get the element of surprise to get that one hit kill. If I miss my shot, if I don't get that kill, I'm most likely going to die here. Um, so I'm trying to use the advantage of surprise here to win. Now you will get um, accused of camping. I don't know if this is <laughs> pointed at me or not, right? But in the kill cam, all the guy will most likely see is me sitting here in the corner waiting for him to walk through the door and then shooting him. And he would perhaps rightfully accuse me of camping, even though you guys have seen me moving through the map pretty rapidly. But I'm using audio to my advantage. Hear these clompy footsteps. Now, here's something else important to note. I'm not aiming at where he's going to come through the door, right? Because I could put my gun sight right here, you know, as he's coming through the door, since that's where I expect him to come from. But he's going to come through quickly, and I don't have the best ninja reflexes in the entire world. So as he's coming through here, he could be or most likely will be sprinting or even tactical sprinting. So by the time I see him and have time to react, if my gun sight's here and he's moving here, by the time I get to react and I fire, he may already be over here. So I'm going to aim and anticipate him coming through this door by aiming out ahead of the door a an amount where I figure once I see him, the amount of time it's going to take me to react, I can either fire when he's here or I can start tracking with him to get that kill more easily as opposed to if I'm, if say I start here when I see him, I only have to say and say I end up killing him here. I only have to track this far versus this far and it just gives me an advantage. If he for whatever reason comes through the doorway and stops, then I also don't have to go very far to engage him. So I'm most likely, since he almost certainly doesn't know I'm here, gonna anticipate him coming out a little bit further before I can react. And so as he comes through, I do have to adjust a little bit, but then I get the kill. So um, I got an artillery strike, call it out there, and I get flanked in the back. So that is uh, kind of that play breakdown. What I'm gonna do now is uh, we're gonna go through this just at real time because I know when I pause and break it down, it sounds like, oh, you're going through, what at this point, 15 minutes of thoughts for a clip that is, uh, that's total segments, so a minute and 31 seconds. This entire streak takes 90 seconds, but as you know, you guys are aware, you can think a lot faster than you can speak and break this stuff down. So the idea is to get you guys to focus on these important things um, and see how these things 
add up from play to play and then how you execute what takes me 15 minutes to explain in 90 seconds. So we're just gonna go through the streak here. Oh, as an alarm goes off. Go through the streak here and just let you guys watch it in real time. Now that you know how my decision making process works, um, we'll see how that play. So I spawn in, I see where all my team is spawning. I'm gonna move towards a route that I like. I'm looking for enemies out here. I'm taking a risk going through the open um, in order to try to get to the enemy in an expedient way since the game is getting closer. Aware someone could be here, take that shot. Moving up, trying to be cautious here. I start taking shots, I try to get a shot on that. Realize he's not gonna probably be chasing. I reload, let myself heal up, move around, try to get an angle on him from here. Can't get an angle, so I'm looking for where the angle is. There, I finally get it, boom, kill him. Moving into cover, being aware that there are enemies around here. I pop my dead silence, which I didn't call attention to earlier. Get that shot on him, doesn't kill him, so I look for the flank so I don't have to chase, see the assist, so I know that he's been killed. I'm still aware that there are probably enemies coming from their spawn here, looking for them to come through that door. Slicing the pie, aiming the gun where I think people are gonna appear, find a guy unawares, go to reload, take some cover, listen to see if I can figure out where the enemies are, move back out to see if they're still spawning out here in their spawn, find a guy AFK, Look that we've moved into their spawn, decide that I want to get to a better position where I have some cover, so I decide to move to this building. I'm moving quickly, tactical sprint. I hear footsteps. I wait to engage, get that kill, and then look to call in my artillery strike. Don't hear the guy coming in behind me. So that is the entire streak uh, in real time, 90 seconds. So. Um, hopefully you guys found this helpful. Uh, let me know what you think of this format. Let me know if it's, you know, not succinct enough. Is it too verbose or is this this kind of stuff you want to, you know, is helpful for you guys? Um, I hope you enjoyed. If you enjoy this, check out my other War College modules. I'm going to be doing more videos like this to supplement my larger, uh, you know, collegiate level War College series. So expect more stuff like this, more play breakdowns and, uh, if you enjoyed it, leave a like, subscribe to see more stuff like this, and to become a minion, because I love you guys being minions. And if you didn't like this video, leave me a comment, let me know what I could do better. If you feel so inclined, you can leave me a dislike. I try not to spend too much time at night crying myself to sleep um, because of dislikes, but I understand. You guys got to give me feedback somehow. So thanks again for watching, and I will see you guys in the next one. Change it, Max.